Hey guys, Noah here for Adafruit. Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. This week we got a really simple project. It's a GoPro mount for these hoverboards. Yeah, the hoverboards, right? You've been hearing about them exploding and whatnot, but we actually got ours a couple months ago, mainly for getting shots and as an image stabilizer. Uh, so we got inspired by the folks over at Corridor Digital and Brendan from Stress Level Zero, who actually are using them uh, to make really, really smooth, steady shots. So this is a video of them when they first got it. And they actually used it uh, a lot on their uh, real GTA video that you guys may have seen on YouTube. So we got inspired and um, you can see they're actually holding uh, cameras, uh, even gimbals and things to make it even more stabilized. But we figured let's give it a try uh, and let's, let's actually mount the GoPro itself onto the hoverboard. Uh, well, it's really a, a smart scooter, whatever you want to call it. The, the, the mono rover is the type that we got, and it looks like that seems to be the standard type. Uh, so they actually are pretty good for that, and we thought, you know, why not make an actual clip, a mount that, uh, that goes directly on the hoverboard and lets you mount uh, small cameras like GoPros. So that was really Pager's idea, and he actually put this together uh, in Fusion 360. So I wanted to go through it and just show you guys how he put it together and then remake it so that it's more parametric. Because right now it's sort of like a sketch, uh, or it's it's not a sketch, it's it's more like uh, a primitive blocks put together. Like it's, it's like a prototype, first version prototype really. So this is the GoPro mount. It actually uses two different types of materials. Uh, the inside, the inner sole is actually printed in uh, NinjaFlex filament. So that's this piece here and it's really simple. Uh, it's really, really simple. So, of course, the first thing you should do is measure the radius of the hoverboard of the area that you're going to clamp your, your thing to. Uh, so, in this case, it was uh, 70 millimeters um, or 69 millimeters, really, in the inner here. And um, the outer side is, is printed in PLA plastic. And what he did was he actually put the, um, the three uh, little mount pieces that that are tip uh, that are standard for all gopro uh enclosures and, and and mechanisms uh so that's what he did here he's got the he's got the hole in there uh, so you can thread in the the little thumb screw and you need you, you it needs support material to print properly um so that's how that's working and then the way it it secures itself to it is it's using this little hook based design so you can see here, uh, there's one hook on the uh, that goes further out than the uh, than the secondary hook, and they can either s they can either twist and slide together, or they can be clipped together. So the way he put that together is actually through a series of uh, squares. So you can see how it, how he built it up here, and um, he used the sketch uh, mainly for just making the first piece, but after that he just wanted to sort of uh, draw out with uh, with squares and this is how I would t typically do it uh, too but uh, once you figure out what kind of mechanism you want uh, then you can start making it more uh, parametric through sketches so here's the second version I made uh, as a redesign and instead of using the GoPro uh, pieces I figured I would make a insert for uh, a D-ring and a cold shoe mount adapter so that we can add the pan and tilt, uh, the pan tilt swivel head so that it has more freedom. Uh, you can adjust it and lock it in place using using the swivel head. So I figured I would do that and it's a lot simpler. It doesn't require any uh, support material even on this outer side. It doesn't need support material. So I just wanted to show you guys how I recreated his uh, his little uh, latch mechanism. Is it latch? Not really a latch. More like a clip. Uh, so you can see here how it works. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, but it's it's drawn with a sketch. And I, when I was drawing it, uh, I found a, a really easy way to manipulate um, manipulate sketches. So um, let's go ahead and recreate it, um, and then show you what we got. Uh, or not? I don't have to really recreate it. You just um, when you're using the line tool, um, I really didn't know what shape I was going to make. So I just kind of, um, I didn't use sketch dimensions really. You can see when you're drawing, you can see what the, 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 the length is. So I was just kind of like saying, okay, well I want something like this. 
I want to come in like this, right? And then, and then just kind of sketch out what you think you want. And I didn't even have to close it. I could just keep it open for the most part. And then really what's cool is like, uh, check out this behavior. So when you click and drag a line, you can see that it's, it's growing, it's moving, but it's not locking to the grid. And I really wanted to do that. So if you want to do that, all you have to do is click and drag on the corner points and then it starts uh, snapping to the grid. And that is ideal for this uh, particular design. So I was able to just move everything and just reference uh, how, how, how big, reference the squares, right? So one, one movement here is actually 0.1 millimeter. So if you put five of these together, it's one millimeter. Is that true or is that, let me double check. <laughs> you can use uh, I on your keyboard or inspect, the inspect thing, to see the distances between something or you could do a sketch dimension. So it is, it is one millimeter in distance. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a one millimeter distance. So, so it is like 0.1 here. And, uh, and you can see that uh, the, the grid has a little bit of a thicker line for 0.5 millimeters. So you can use that. And then you can just reference, um, you can just reference this. So I'm just going to draw this out and then make it uh, how I think it should be. So it's one, it's, it's like one millimeter across this whole thing, right? So I'll make this like that. And you can use whatever point you want. And that's pretty much it. And then from there, if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to get this whole thing. Let me close it off first so it makes a, a complete sketch. Excuse me. So if I wanted to find out the midpoint, you've seen me do this quite a bit before. So it's like this. That's my midpoint. I click over here. And then click on this make it a construction line so it no longer intersects with it. And then let's say I wanted to like move this to the center. I can just make another construction line on the center like that. Click on that and then I'll lock this in so that it doesn't move. Otherwise, if I don't lock that, um, it'll, uh, it'll move this to that. So now I can uh, do a collinear where I say I want that to be with this and it'll move that whole piece like that. So that's how I was able to get the, the thing in the center. Did it just move that? It totally did. That's crazy. I don't know why it moved that. That made no sense. I didn't want to move that. It's so weird. <laughs> if anyone knows why that happened, let me know. It shouldn't have moved that. Oh, you know why? Because I'm in the same sketch. I should be in a different sketch. That's kind of weird. So, um, yeah, you don't want to do that in the same sketch so you can see some funkiness happens. Another thing I forgot to mention is sort of the way it's uh, clamping, right? So this, the way Pedro did it is they're actually separated from each other, the two little hook parts. But in my iteration, I actually made it so that they're printing in place. And there was a little bit of issue there, uh, especially with tolerances. So uh, in the beginning, I started off with, so you can see here, it's the clearance, right? Uh, let me let me get out of the sketch and then show you the body. So you can see the, the, the distance between these two clips uh, are 0.5 millimeters. I started off with 0.1, then 0.2, then 0.3. And then I just said, okay, let me just go with 0.5 millimeters. It's a half of a millimeter. And then that should work out for the most, uh, for most printers. And it, and it does. Uh, so uh, the cool thing though, or the ideal thing about it is it, because I have a sketch, it was easy to, uh, to, to make that edit. So when I came in here to the clip, I was able to uh, move this stuff uh, fairly easy. So I can go like this and then like this. And then just do that all the way around and then have my, my distances like that. Of course, I could also use a, a sketch dimension. So if I want like this to this. It'll, it'll be 0.5, so let's say I want one millimeter, and it'll make it that way. But then you have to adjust uh, this part here, but that's fine. So let's say, uh, let me undo that, undo that. Let's say I want this distance to this distance always be one millimeter, hit OK. And then this distance from here is 0.5. So if I wanted to change this to like uh, one millimeter, it now pushes that. So now I have to do, <laughs> now I have to do another sketch dimension here to here, make it one, 
And now when I adjust this to one millimeter, it pushes the whole thing out. So that's ideally the next thing you, you want to do is to put um, sketch dimensions across all these things, which I am doing now. <laughs> so okay, there you go. So you do have to kind of um, lock your thing, lock your dimensions into place when you want to when you want to make it right. So I'm just going to change it back to 0.5 and this back to 0.5. So that's a, that's about it. You can you can use sketch dimensions or you could just reference um, the, 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 the little squares, the grid, and you can just keep manipulating it how you want. Uh, so obviously you can make it over constrained <laughs> pretty quickly, but um, that's, the, that's the last piece that I wanted to add. So in any way, uh, that's what I wanted to show you guys. It was a quick one this week. But um, we're gearing up for obviously the holidays and things, so it was it was going to be a really quick project this week. Um, it was really fun though because um, I, re I like any type of project that lets you go outside and have a little bit of fun, especially on a hoverboard. If you did get a hoverboard, of course, be careful charging it. Obviously, we've seen reports of them exploding and things because people aren't charging them properly. And even Amazon uh, came out and said, "Hey, we, we're gonna." We're only going to st uh, stock the ones that are certified batteries and have certified chargers and things. So just to be really cautious, ours is uh, actually pretty good. We have no problems with it, um, but we are considering uh, replacing it for one that is certified because I don't think ours is. But it's, it is uh, specifically for the mono rover type, and you can see in this week's project video a little bit about it. And th this week's project video is more about uh, what do the shots look like on it, how, how well does it actually perform as an image stabilizer, um, but that's pretty much it. Um, uh, let me guys know uh, if you have any questions, of course, and we'll answer them on the 3D Hangout show. Uh, I think we're going to have one uh, next week. We might not. Uh, it, it all depends on some things. So, But if not, happy holidays, guys. I will see you guys in the next one.